Hello everyone, it's your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black the One Only, here with another exciting video. And in this video, I'm going to be reading the DC Universe Encyclopedia entry for King Shark. I'm going to be not only reading over this entry, but commenting on it. Um, I'm going to be like asking you guys questions about it. Um, it's more or less going to be my first, like, real introduction to King Shark. I've read comics featuring King Shark before, I've seen him in, like, animated movies and stuff, but I can't honestly say that I know a lot about him. So I feel like as we read through this together, we'll both be able to go on an adventure where we both learn more about who King Shark is as a character. Before we get this started, don't forget to smash that like button, by the way. If you have anyone who's a big King Shark fan or someone who you think would want to learn more about King Shark, feel free to share this video with them. Without further ado, let's hop right in and start reading this entry from the official DC Universe website. King Shark, this low-born son of an ancient shark god, was the terror of the Hawaiian seas, before a hard time with the Suicide Squad turned him towards a life of maritime crime. So hold on, King Shark is the son of a god? Who, is he like part god, part human? Is he like a demigod? I had no idea that King Shark had like any divine lineage. So already things have gotten very interesting very quickly. So his other aliases are, and I'm going to butcher this, Naneu or Trixie. So Trixie, Naneu, or King Shark. His first appearance was in Superboy number 0, 1994. Was he like one of the first 90 Superboy villains? The son of a shark god? This is getting more interesting the further I go through. Not to be confused with the mutated Green Lantern enemy, the Shark, I didn't know that was a character, or the white-collar Batman villain, Great White Shark. Wait, hold on. Batman has a Shark villain, and it's not King Shark? They keep throwing me with stuff I haven't seen, like I haven't heard of before. King Shark was originally an enemy of Superboy. Although today he's more commonly associated with the villain ensembles such as the Secret Six, I don't know who they are, um, and the Suicide Squad, I am familiar with them, or as an enemy of Aquaman. That's what I would guess if you were to like just say, who do you think King Shark's like big enemy is? I would probably guess like, also I'm going to move my little portrait thing over here. That way I'm not blocking anything. Basically, this ah, ad. There are ads on the music. Give me one moment. So, if I had to guess, I would guess that um, King Shark is like an Aquaman villain. Like, that would be like my first guess. Um, but I honestly have never seen an Aquaman story where King Shark was the villain. Also, I'm going to skip this song real quick. Uh, I don't like how tingy it is. Here we go. So let me continue through with reading this. The son of a shark deity, Nanu usually seeks little more than to feed on his prodigious appetites. Though since his liberation from the Suicide Squad, he set his sights on loftier goals, the criminal underworld of Atlantis. Interesting. His name's King Shark, and he used to be more of like I wouldn't say a petty criminal, but like a suicide squad lackey or whatever. But now he wants to... Is he trying to rule over the criminal underworld of Atlantis? I mean, he's a literal, like, son of a god. Why doesn't he just want to, like, rule Atlantis? Like, why doesn't he want to just control Atlantis? It still sounds like it's lower goals than what he could aspire to. You know what I mean? I'm very curious to see if he has more powers than I think he does, considering the fact that he's like literally a divine being. Uh, so let's go over his origin. When King Shark first appeared to menace the people of Hawaii, who dared to wade too far into the water, speculations on his origin varied wildly. Some believed he represented a new mutant evolution of the shark uh, with humanoid features. Others supposed that he was a man who had mutated a shark-like appearance. The truth proved to be more fantastic than either theory. King Shark's true identity was Nanu, the obstinate prodigal son 
of the mystical shark god and a human woman. So he is a demigod. That's really interesting. At first, Nanu was content to strike terror into Hawaiians and occasionally feast upon them. But a run-in with a vacationing DC superhero would soon make his life much more complicated. So after he fought Superboy, it like put him on this crazy, like more supervillain-esque path. Before he was just kind of a beast. Who's his mom? That's something I'm actually legitimately curious about. Powers and abilities. As a shark demigod, King Shark has enough power to make him a formidable enemy to any hero. King Shark exhibits heightened physical strength, speed, durability, and enhanced senses, including sonar detection and regeneration from even extreme injuries. I didn't know that he had like a really powerful healing factor. When they say from extreme injuries, what does that include? If I like behead King Shark, can he come back from that? He also possesses razor sharp claws and teeth, which can easily tear and rend even the strongest of human flesh. Furthermore, King Shark has proven resistant to Aquaman's telepathy. Naturally, he's a very good swimmer. Okay. I didn't know that he's resistant to Aquaman's telepathy, so Aquaman can't just like hacks beat King Shark. I would have probably assumed that he could. I don't like how tingy this one is either. Let me skip that song. Let me skip this one as well, because this one has vocals in it. Okay, play on this song. That's an ad. Okay. And... Let's go with this one for now. So, Enemy of Superboy, 1994 to 2002. King Shark's first entanglement with the superhero community came years after, his, after he first started leaving blood in Hawaii's waters. The first person to collar King Shark was a Honolulu-based policeman, Sam Makoa, though he sustained great injuries and nearly lost his life in the process. But King Shark was soon freed from captivity by the Silicon Dragons, Honolulu's resident tech-based gang of criminals, hoping he'd join their ranks. King Shark was uninterested and used his window of escape to return to his feeding frenzy. Unfortunately for King Shark, Superboy, the Cadmus Laboratory's grown teenage clone of Superman, had chosen that moment to, oh had chosen the moment of his escape to set up patrol in Hawaii now that Superman was back in Metropolis. Superboy single-handedly returned King Shark to the police, earning the superhero skeptic officer Makoa's begrudging respect. In an unlikely turn of events, King Shark find, found himself allied with both Superboy and Makoa when all three were drafted by the Suicide Squad to take down the Silicon Dragons. Why would Superboy and a police officer be drafted by the Suicide Squad? Also, the concept of King Shark and Superboy teaming up sounds pretty cool. To keep King Shark in check, an explosive belt was placed around his waist in case he lost his temper. Naturally, when it came to throw down with the dragons, that's exactly what happened. Director Amanda Waller detonated the belt to keep King Shark's manic attacks against all sides. To keep King Shark's manic attacks against all sides. That's oddly written. But it wasn't enough to stop him. King Shark merely regenerated from the explosive fallout and swam back into the depths from whence he came. Interesting. So he can survive having like the lower half of his body blown up. That is a pretty impressive regenerative ability. I'm curious how he scales, because they were talking about how it's like, he's strong enough to go up against any opponent, and it's like, well, that's not really true. Like, I'm not sure if he could throw hands with, like, Superman, you know what I mean? Protector of Aquaman, Aquaman Sword of Atlantis, 2006 to 2007. King Shark resurfaced a few times in the years between his encounter with Superboy and Infinite Crisis, but made few significant moves. His next major appearance came in Aquaman Sword of Atlantis. Humbled by a scar given to him by the hook-handed King of Atlantis after he had attacked an Atlantean priest in an attempt... Real quick, there is another ad on the music. And we're back. Let's see. 
Humbled by a scar given to him by the hook-handed king of Atlantis after he had attacked an Atlantean priest in an attempt to increase his own father's power. For three years, King Shark was held captive for his crimes by Atlantis's holy order of the thorny crown, until Aquaman, now reincarnated through the fallout of Infinite Crisis as the eldritch and powerful Dweller of the Depths, charged King Shark with a quest of personal redemption to watch over his heir, Arthur Joseph Curry, a vessel for the lost human portion of Aquaman's soul. Reluctantly, King Shark followed the Dweller's commands, formally introducing the former Aquaman to his successor. King Shark persisted in this role for some time, though Arthur Joseph Curry left his post as heir sometime before the original Aquaman himself would be reborn in brightest day. Whoa, wait, hold on a second. Because I got a little lost while I was reading that. Aquaman was reincarnated through the fallout of Infinite Crisis as the eldritch and powerful dweller of the depths. What? I'm actually like incredibly confused. So Aquaman at some point died. Then he was reincarnated as like an eldritch being who became the king of Atlantis. And then King Shark became the protector of Aquaman's son, like of like the prince of Atlantis or whatever. And that was the status quo for like a year. That's actually rather interesting. I've never heard anyone talk about Aquaman becoming like an eldritch god before. But I guess because it was only for this like, <gasps> excuse me, short period of time, as far as I understand. That's still really interesting though. Uh, the next section is called The Secret Years, Secret Six, 2008 to 2011. Weary from the burdens of authority and guardianship, King Shark returned to his simplistic lifestyle, feasting on people and making a modest living by accepting contracts on specific people to eat. This period brought him in opposition with the ragtag mercenary group, the Secret Six, on multiple occasions. Though he eventually joined their gleefully murderous ranks as a member just in time for their ultimate defeat. At the end, King Shark was granted a rematch against his original enemy Superboy, though it was the interference of Supergirl which proved to be his demise. Interesting. So all this stuff that we just read was like pre the New 52, so all of this is probably no longer in continuity. And by probably, I mean most definitely just not a thing that happened anymore. So now we're getting into like current continuity King Shark. So we're gonna get to like relevant stuff. Okay. The secret, oh, I already read that one. The New 52, Suicide Squad, 2011 to 2016. The next time King Shark appeared, it was with a sleek new hammerhead design, and once again as an initiate to the Suicide Squad. Though this time the squad had refined their punitive measures to an explosive chip in the cranium, removing the possibility for escape. Okay, so King Shark, it sounds like, cannot regenerate from getting his head blown up. King Shark's ruthlessness and resilience made him an irreplaceable asset in this incarnation of the squad for quite some time, with his utility even allowing Waller to overlook his ravenous consumption of the occasional disposable teammate. But when Bell Rev was compromised by the crime syndicate of America's secret society of supervillains and forever evil, King Shark took the opportunity to leave the Suicide Squad behind once more and join their ranks before returning to the sea upon their defeat. Interesting, so King Shark has gone through a lot of different transformations over the years. Like if we take a moment to look back, you can see that um, he was like a villain, he fought Superboy, but then later, he ended up being a member of the Suicide Squad, so he was kind of like an anti-hero kind of thing. Then, he was a villain, straight up, where he was fighting, like, Aquaman. Um, but then, he became, like, a hero by force. Like, he didn't really have a choice about whether or not he'd be a hero. And he had to protect, like, the Prince of Atlantis. So that kind of put him in a, like, semi-heroic position. Then, for the Secret Six thing, he's pretty much just a mercenary. He's just straight up a bad guy. Like, I wouldn't even say that he's, like, an anti-hero. He's just gone fully back to villain. And then in the New 52, he's, like, in more of an anti-hero position again. Because he's a member of the Suicide Squad, so he's, like, begrudgingly heroic. 
But then he becomes a straight-up supervillain during Forever Evil. So there's like a whole bunch of stuff going on with King Shark. He's constantly jumping from like villain to like anti-hero, but it's not really his choice, to like straight-up villain again. Um, and now we're on to Rebirth. So Rebirth is current continuity King Shark. King Shark resurfaced in the Rebirth era as an agent of Nemo, the nautical enforcement of macrocosmic order, a terrorist organization led by Black Manta. King Shark was soundly defeated by the Teen Titans, which at the time included Black Manta's own son, Jackson Hyde, the current Aqualad. By this time, King Shark was done playing other people's games. Uh, Nanu posted up in the lower levels of Atlantis with other inhuman members of the kingdom and leveraged his prodigious experience in the world of supervillainy to carve out his own criminal operation. This would lead to an unlikely alliance with an exiled Aquaman after the xenophobic tyrant Coram Wrath had disposed him from the throne. Reaching a mutual understanding with King Shark that Coram Wrath's defeat would be in their mutual interest, Aquaman teamed up with King Shark and used his resources and used his resources to end Wrath's coup for the kingdom. Get this music back up. Here we go. In the subsequent reign of Queen Mera, King Shark would enter an uneasy alliance with the authority of Atlantis, even defending the realm from his former comrades in the Suicide Squad, and doing battle in the process with his replacement on the team, Killer Croc. Wait, so in Rebirth, it seemed like King Shark was like, I'm tired by playing by other people's rules. And then he joined a terrorist organization that he didn't lead. So he's like, I'm tired of other rules. I'm going to join a group that's ruled by other people, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. He gets beat by the Teen Titans. Then he teams up with Aquaman to help dethrone Coram Wrath. And then when Queen Mera takes control of Atlantis, King Shark's like, I guess I'm an ally of Atlantis now. And he helps them defend Atlantis from the Suicide Squad, and he fights off against Killer Croc. I would say King Shark is now safely back in an anti-hero position, because it sounds like he's like, I'm an ally of Atlantis, but that's only because it really works in my favor to be one, not because he's like a good person. So King Shark has consistently jumped back and forth from being like villain to begrudging anti-hero to villain to begrudging anti-hero to villain to begrudging anti-hero all throughout his history. He seems to be ridden very consistently, I would say. So that's kind of interesting. For team affiliations, before I even click on it, I imagine it's going to say the Suicide Squad, the Secret Society of Supervillains. Um, it's going to say Nemo. Um, and it might say something about him being like a part of like the Atlantean Guard or something due to the Protector of Aquaman sec segment like right here. I think I already said Secret Six. Let's look at team affiliations. Suicide Squad, Secret Society of Supervillains, the uh, Supervillains, the Secret Six, and Nemo. That's what I thought. And then appearances in other media. Um, it's just showing all the different shows he's appeared in. He's really weird in... Uh, Harley Quinn, he's not like this at all in Harley Quinn. He's like a hacker in Harley Quinn. He's been in the Flash show, and I have seen him in the Flash show. And he's been in DC Superhero Girls. I did not know that. Um, let's see. He's going to be in the new Suicide Squad movie. I did not know that. He's in Batman Assault on Ar the He's in Batman Assault on Arkham. He's also in the new uh, Justice League Apocalypse War movie as well. So I'm surprised they don't have that listed yet. They probably haven't updated it. But he's also in Justice League Apocalypse War, uh, where he mainly just says his name over and over again. Um, and he also appeared in Superman Batman Public Enemies. He's in Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. He's in Lego DC Supervillains, and he's in DC Universe Online. So yeah, that's King Shark. Overall, um, I would say the most interesting thing about King Shark that I learned was that he is a demigod. 
Um, and I guess the other thing that I learned that was really cool is that he has regeneration abilities, so he can regenerate from having, like, the lower half of his body exploded, which is pretty good. That's pretty solid regeneration. I didn't know that he was a member of so many different teams. I didn't even know the team, like, Secret Six or Nemo even existed until now. Uh, the Secret Society of Supervillains, I also am not familiar with that particular naming convention. Um, because it sounds very similar to, like, the Injustice League and, like, stuff like that. Just, like, another name for that kind of thing. Um, I think regeneration was the only really crazy power that he had that I didn't know that he had before. I guess I didn't know that he had sonar detection. That is kind of interesting. Um, I was surprised that he, like, came from Hawaii. And that the first person he ever fought was Superboy. That he was originally like a Superboy enemy. That was kind of new. I'm trying to see like what all about him stood out to me. I didn't know that Green Lantern had an enemy called the Shark. And I didn't know that Batman had an enemy called Great White Shark. Those two were totally new things. Um, the Aquaman thing. Where they're like, yeah, so Aquaman got reincarnated as like an eldritch being. That's wild. I've never heard that before. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Um, one interesting stuff from King Shark's, like, bio, like his encyclopedia entry, really stood out to you, and why? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button. Favorite, comment, subscribe, and ding, 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 ring the notification bell to be notified whenever we do these videos. This is your host, friend, your boy, Jet Black One Only, log it out. Um, make sure you guys check out my These Superheroes Do Not Exist video. It's for a project that I'm getting started uh, that hopefully will have a Kickstarter soon. Uh, it doesn't have one yet. Uh, but definitely stay tuned for more updates on that and check out that video. Anyways, thank you all once again. This is your friend, your boy. Jump like the one only. Log it out. Peace. Thank you for watching. Check it out, guys.